Hello and welcome back to Strathpeffer Junction. Uh, today I'm going to do a fairly a fairly swift video on uh, how to use a, a TTS, Hornby TTS decoder, uh, that's the, their twin track digital sound, uh, in a, a 21 pin locomotive. Um, now just to, to start off with, this works for Bachmann locomotives. Um, I don't think it would work for a Helgen locomotive because while they are 21 pin as well, they tend to have a higher current draw, which is probably out with the capabilities of the TTS decoder. But certainly from a Bachmann locomotive point of view, it definitely works. Um, so this really came off the back of a discussion that I was having with somebody on one of the online forums who was asking, can you, can you use the TTS decoders? Uh, and if so, how do you go about doing that? Now, there, there are... Um, aftermarket adapters you can get. Here's one here, I don't, it might be a DCC Concepts one, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, uh, that allow you to plug in the 8-pin uh, so, uh, plug here and they've got the uh, the socket for the 21-pin. The problem that I found, however, is that say in the Class 47 and the Class 37s from Bachmann, it's almost impossible to seat this adapter with the, uh, the the eight pin plug in that, and then still have enough room to get the the body back on the chassis. So I found that actually you can't use these adapters uh, to to make a TTS sound chip fit with one of these locos. So I'll show you how I got around that problem um, and how I'm now running three, I think, three different locos, two forty sevens and a thirty seven, off a, a TTS chip. Okay, so the first thing that you need is a TTS decoder. Now, I don't have one at the moment because I've installed all the ones that I had, but for the sake of argument, this is a TTS decoder. Um, you also need um, an 8-pin to 21-pin adapter, uh, like the DCC Concepts one or Lace DCC do them, I think, as well, and there's probably some others. Now, we're not going to use it as it comes, but you do need one of these to start off with. So we'll move the locomotive out of the way and then I'll show you how we prepare the adapter and the chip ready to install. So the reason that I said we need one of these is that, um, try as I may, I've not actually found a company that will sell just the 21 pin sockets. And even if they did, the soldering is really pretty finicky and makes it very hard to work with. So what I did in order to make the, the 8 pin work with, with the adapter, I'll pop this aside for a second, is to, to cut off the, the 8 pin socket here. So that what we're left with is the 21 pin um, socket uh, and a, a PCB with solder tabs that we can access, which is the key thing. So the way that I did this was to, to get a modelling saw. Um, I think this is a, an Expo brand, but there's a variety around there. Uh, and very carefully cut in between the PCB and the socket in a very careful backs and forwards motion. Uh, now, I'm not going to do it with this one because I, I do actually <laughs> need this one for something else. But it's really important when you're doing it that you make sure that you're not scratching the PCB itself. Because there's some solder tracks, or some copper tracks rather, that run just under the surface of the top of the PCB. And if you cut through those, it's going to make it very hard to, to solder on and access those tracks. So. Some, if you can, maybe just angle the blade up slightly and just very slowly work your way through until that's off. Um, it won't take too long, particularly if you've got a nice new sharp sharp saw, uh, but work your way backs and forwards, backs and forwards, maybe just with the leading edge pointed up slightly to avoid the PCB. And then, in true Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier. Once you've done that, you should be left with the 21-pin socket, the PCB, uh, and a number of solder tabs, or it might be holes, it will depend how clean your cut was, uh, from underneath the socket. Um, what I then did was, uh, sometimes you're left a little hole, sometimes you're not, but what I would do is I would apply a little bit of liquid flux on top of here and then dab a little bit of solder on top just to create a nice clean smooth platform or clean tabs that we can access to solder on, on the wires. One thing to mention is that there are there are different brands of of these adapter plugs. Um, I'll turn them around so the same way around. This is an LAIS or Lays DCC one. This one I think is DCC Concepts. You'll notice that both of them have some solder pads down here, and there's a single one there. Now those relate to the auxiliary functions on the the decoder, um, and we'll come on to them in a minute because on this one you have to do some soldering, and on this one 
you don't necessarily have to do some soldering in order to get the auxiliary the auxiliaries to work. But we'll come on to that in just a minute. Okay, so I've opened up the, the class 47. Now, I'm not going to take out the, the decoder and the speakers and all the rest because it's really quite a lot of work just to, to show something which I can probably show uh, in situ. Uh, but one thing to mention, um, I did I did change the speaker um, away from the, the original speaker on this particular chip. Now the new class 47 TTS sound chips I suspect are probably coming out with 40 by 20 speakers and they may be sufficient to, to leave in place uh, just as I did with my class 37 TTS chip. Uh, but in this one it came with a, a round speaker which is pretty rubbish so I substituted it for this. Um, in terms of this install, there's lots of videos on YouTube already on how to put in these speakers into these types of locos. So I'm not going to cover this again, um, but we'll, we'll have a look at the chip itself and the adapter or the customized adapter, adapted adapter, I should perhaps say. So, so here we have it. We have the uh, the LAIS DC or LACE DC adapter, but now wired up to the TTS decoder. Um, so. Without wanting to go through every single step, what I did was cut off the 8-pin plug, as close to the plug as I could because I didn't need it for anything else. Then I stripped back each of these uh, wires, I tinned them, and then I tinned the, uh, the little solder pads which had been revealed from the, the, the actual uh, adapter which we've already prepared. And then I just systematically uh, soldered wire onto here, wire onto here, wire onto here, and so on. Now, the way I did it was I started with the, the inside row of tabs just because it's easier to access them, um, and then I soldered the, the outside row of tabs uh, afterwards because it's slightly less cluttered doing it that way. But really, whatever you find works for you. Um, I'll pop up a, a diagram shortly um, just to show the wiring for this, but it's pretty much the same as the, the wiring uh, for a, an 8-pin socket. The, the one thing that you just have to, to remember is that, uh, that you're, you're wiring as if it's the top of a socket, if that makes any sense. But anyway, I'll pop on the screen now uh, a, a picture of the, the wiring for this so that you can have a look in case you want to follow that yourself. Okay, so we've got everything wired up here. Now the next thing that I, I, I touched on or hinted at earlier on was to do with the auxiliaries. Now the way that the TTS chip uh, is wired up, you have, uh, you have the, the, the directional lights, which are the, the white and green, coming back to the, the, common, the common positive, which is the blue. Um, but we also have the green, which is a single, a single additional auxiliary channel. On some other decoders, you'll have different ones, purple and others as well, as you work your way up to the auxiliaries. But on the TTS ones, it's just the green. Now, depending on the type of adapter you've bought, uh, the green may or may not be wired up and, and ready to rock. Now, on these lace DCC chips, it's not wired up. So if you do nothing, then you won't be able to use the auxiliary. If you use one of these DCC concepts chips, the uh, the green auxiliary is already wired to the the appropriate auxiliary on the 21 pin. So if you use one of these ones, then you don't need to do any further soldering once you put all these wires in place. If you do want to use an, ex an additional auxiliary, you can access it through the pad if you wanted to, to wire up something else or to, to change customization, but you don't have to do that. On the LAIS chips, LACE DCC chips, <laughs> one, one day I'll work out how to pronounce that, but on these ones, what you get is you get the chip um, and you get a solder pad there and there and a solder pad there and there. Now I have actually soldered across one of these ones already um, so that I can use this for something else, but they won't be soldered when you get it. So what you need to decide is which auxiliary, is it the auxiliary one or the auxiliary two, do you want to run from the green cable? If it's, uh, if it's auxiliary one, which is the standard green one, then you would solder across the, the J4. So you'd put a, either a tiny bit of wire or a blob of solder to cross these two. And if it was the other, then you would solder across these. 
Now, I, I mentioned there you choose one or the other, um, depending on which auxiliary channel you want to, to feed off the green. Now, in theory, you might be able to solder across both and operate two channels off the same, but you would need to be very careful that the wiring um, was compatible with, with what the chip can do, that you weren't overdriving that channel in terms of the, the current output that it can support and so on. Um, so I would suggest you just choose one or other, or if you're using this particular one, the, the DCC Concepts one, then you don't have to worry about it. So now we've got the, the adapter wired up to the chip. We've sorted out the auxiliary soldering if we needed to do that. Now what we effectively have is a 21 pin TTS decoder. <laughs> it's, it's really pretty much no more than that. So it means that we can't use it on an 8 pin uh, Hornby anymore uh, without reversing all of this. But it's perfectly doable if you wanted to reverse it. You can just find an 8 pin plug and resolder or reattach these. Anyway, now that we've got this, all we need to do is seat it just like we do with any other 21 pin decoder. Seat it onto the sockets there, making sure that we're not shorting anything out and that we're, we're well pushed down as we are. Clear everything there. Fantastic. And that's it. Really very straightforward, uh, converting the TTS chip to work with a 21-pin 21 21 pin chassis. Um, now, I'm not going to video putting the, the body back together and running it on the, the test track because I know this works and this isn't the purpose of this video. Uh, but the main thing as ever is just make sure that the, the speaker wires are tacked down out the way, that black tack, if you've used it, is not inhibiting the speaker. That the, the actual wires and the decoder are well fixed down and all the rest just avoid shorts. But uh, once you've got to this stage, you're pretty much good to go. Give it a wee test on the test track now before you pop the body on just to make sure everything's working before you've screwed in all those screws. Um, but, but that's really it. Uh, you've got your nice basic TTS sound working in a Bachmann 21 pin chassis. So thank you for watching anyway. This was, uh, I hope, a, a nice short but nonetheless useful video um, and uh, I hope to be back soon with a, another video about something else going on at Strathpeffer Junction. Thanks very much for watching. Cheerio for now. Bye-bye.